What happens when you get into debt? I'll do what I want. I will punch you clean through that window. And you can't. You think you can tear my family apart? Or won't pay it back. I can't no. pay you. I can't no. pay you. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. You better get out of here, or somebody's gonna get hurt. Dealing with desperate debtors. In dramatic situations. I'm not getting okay. irate for any other reason than your van okay. is on my drive. We meet the people who are losing their homes. And I haven't been sleeping or anything because I've been worried about all of this. And their possessions. So he's just got to find some money. The debt's too large. Because whatever happens, if you can't pay. Get your hands off of me. They'll take it away. Research has shown that more than 8 out of 10 young adults in the UK admit to having received financial support from their parents. One in three parents have been under financial pressure as a result of bailing out their adult children. Father and son team Dell and Dale Anglin are High Court enforcement agents. They work across the south of England, enforcing writs and repossessing properties. It's like wacky races down here with the pedal bikes, isn't it? It's 7.30 a.m. They're on their way to Lambeth, South London, with a writ to collect nearly £2,000 owed to a storage company. All right, Dale, what have we got, mate? Got up. Miss Gemma Moore. You've been here before, haven't you? Yeah, I've been to this address before. Since Dell's last visit, the debt has fussed on a payment plan set up for her. Your destination is on the left. Yeah, is it? This time, the agent need to resolve the case conclusively. So they set on range, which is going to pay some money. They gave her a few days to pay half of it, and she's going to pay the other half within a month. Um, and she hasn't done that. She doesn't want to answer her phone anymore, so we obviously we have to come back and at least try and chase it out for the claimant's sake. The agents are returning to the family home, where the debtor lives with her young baby. Morning. I'm looking for Gemma. She's not here. Sorry, Sorry hello. Hello? Sorry? I'm here to speak to Gemma. She knows why can't I? Would you wait for that, please? Because we're allowed to come at the time. We've, we've given a bit of discussion, really, because we start to sit. I know she's not into but we've got a high court where it's got to be resolved. We spoke to her last time. So, hold on, speak to her. Hold on, hold on. No, it's not. It's not your problem, I know, but I'm going to speak to you about it. I'll just keep ringing the bell again. It's not her house. It's fine. Uh, Listen, I don't want to keep coming here. Yeah, don't Listen, don't I will. Me. Let me speak to her. Why? I'm not trying to... So we can get cleared up so I don't... To Listen, to I don't want to keep coming back here. here. If she comes to the door, we can put it to bed. Get out of my house. No, yeah. Listen, what are you doing? Get we're out of my house. We're not leaving. I will, I will call the police. Call them. Please call them. With a high court writ, the agents are allowed to enter the house through an open door to carry out their duties. Get out of my fucking house! Why are you swearing? Why are you swearing? Because you're in my house and you're not Why wanted you here. Get out! I don't now. want to be here. Get out! I don't want to be here either. I'll call, a, I'll call them. Go on, please. Call, call the police. Stand there. If you come over to this house, you're getting arrested. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm definitely you not. Come into my fucking house. Just call the police. Not. Very well. you're not are you going to call the police? You're intruding in my house. I thought you were going to call the police. Suddenly, the debtor, Gemma, appears in the hallway. No, I'm not going. I'm no Gemma. I don't know who he is, right? OK. Gemma's brother gets on the phone to the police. It's a high court writ. I've got it here. It's your sister's copy. I have to give it to your sister like this when I finish this. She's got a copy of it from last time, yeah? Dell needs Gemma to understand why they're back. The reason we're here again is because you said that you was going to pay half of it that week. Well, at the time, I didn't realise that that would have been a possibility. Right. OK. We were happy to make that arrangement with you. You've not kept your word, and so we're here. The issue I've got now is I don't know what belongs to you in this house no. and what... No, hear me up. ..and what doesn't. Now, if I can't trust your word because I think you're lying to me, I'm going to want to see receipts for everything in this house to, to get this sorted out. As Gemma has defaulted on her payment plan, the items in her home could be seized to pay off the debt. 
but she thinks a letter sent by the storage company has bought her time. But in the letter, I wrote something. Yeah. It says, contact them by the 22nd. Right. Either they, I can make the arrangement or I have to remove my goods. Or they'll remove it. 22nd of this month? Yeah. That's what the storage people yeah. have said. Have you got the letter? <laughs> Thank you. Then they're talking about disposing your stuff if you don't contact them. The letter is about removal of her goods from the storage unit and not the recovery of the money she owes. The agents are still duty bound to enforce the High Court writ. Have you spoke to them yet? Don't want to lose your stuff as well. Yeah. When we deal with sort of young defendants, uh, nine times out of ten, uh, they're, they've totally messed up, made big mistakes, the world's fallen down around them, and you're going to deal with the high emotions and the shock of us being there inside a family home, and it's not just one person now, it's the whole family. The agents have been at the property for 20 minutes when Gemma's mother arrives home. Is this well, the mother? Just no, we're just talking. No, no, there's not talking in my home. This is my home. She is coming to an agreement. OK, with whoever the storage people that shows the money to. So, Why are you back? Well, she got home. Kept to me. And what, how much were you supposed to pay? He said, well, they wanted, like, I told you about 800 quid they wanted, but then I couldn't do that, yeah. could I? No. We've been making phone calls to, to, to prevent us having to come back here. We don't want to waste our time and come exactly. back here for no reason. We wanted to do it. That's fair enough. This is my Listen, home. I understand that. She doesn't that. live here. I'm... She doesn't live here. I wasn't even here for how long? Six no. days? Yeah. I wasn't even here. She chucked me out. I don't I know that. Last time you were here, I said, I was I that from putting her on sofas? Living on my city for a year. It seems the debt has caused deep family divisions, and Gemma's mother recently made her leave the family home. I've been saying to her, pay that storage, sort out that storage, yeah. sort out that storage. She's got no money, she's got no home. The only thing she's got is the clothes on her back. OK. With Gemma saying she can't pay, will Dell and Dale ever get the £2,000 they came? High Court enforcement agents Del Anglin and his son Dale were in Lambeth, South London, to collect £2,000 owed to a storage company. Get out of my fucking house! The agents have returned after Gemma defaulted on her payment plan. And this is my home. Why are you back? Now they need payment today. The reason we are back is because Gemma made an arrangement with, you. with us right. to sort this out. Now, yeah. If she couldn't do that, yeah. or she, her circumstances had changed, right. she should have just given us a call. Now, the issue is, we've got an outstanding matter that's got to be addressed. It needs to be resolved, and I need some form of payment, because yeah. she's broken her word with me. Right. Right? Now, if, she, if someone breaks her word with you, right. are you likely to be able to trust her next time? No, of course not. Well, that's the issue no. on that. I did say, give me, what, you're right, I did say last time, but I haven't actually got anything. What she said was she didn't have anything, her stuff was in storage, and she didn't have any work. No, no, no. But then she also said... Yeah. She'd be able to pay half the debt by Friday. By Friday. Yeah. Try. Try. That wasn't what you said. Mm. You said... No, and I said I'd speak to my mum. Did I not say I'd speak to my mum? Yes, and then you'd pay the payment by Friday. Right. OK? That didn't happen. You received no phone call. The arrangement's been broken. Uh, the debt doesn't disappear. Dell and Dale must now get the case resolved one way or another. How can I really flex? Well, it's would... It's £1,945.83. pence. I can't handle this. Of course you can't. My mum would hang me from the nearest pair. Do I don't know how you can address that, because it's a lot of money. And I don't expect you to sprinkle it out of thin air. Oh, you can set up a direct debit from me. OK. Yeah, we'll do that today, yeah? Despite her frustration, Gemma's mother agrees to help her daughter out. See, no. I can't have this, do you know what I mean? This is too much for me. Okay. So we'll what are we out. talking about then? What do you think we well, can afford? Well, I can, uh, £100 a month. Let's see if, um, see if the link's up there. In some instances, debtors have to resort to the bank of mum and dad to help them through difficult times. Your parents will always want to help their kids. That's what most of us do. It's heartwarming to see that. Dale calls the office to see if the claimant will accept the payment plan of £100 a month. This case, obviously, you've seen a report last time, she lives in her mum's house, um, so she doesn't have any assets. While Dale waits to hear from the office, Dale wants to find out more about how Gemma got herself into this situation. 
It's unfortunate that sometimes when things go wrong, everything seems to go wrong, doesn't it? You know? all the furniture in storage. You know, and it's just. Not bad, mate, not bad. So I have to get up. Can I give you a reference book? So then it all went in storage. Did they evict you? I know, I know. Why not? Don't wait the baby. Listen. Don't listen, Gemma. Don't get upset. 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 You've got the people that won't pay, and those are the people I want. I don't want the people that can't pay and haven't got the means to do so. I mean, we're here, believe it or not, we're here to help. Minutes later, Dale hears back from the office. Thank you, mate. Bye. The £100 a month agreement has been accepted. I need to get back to work. Right. Don't, we won't, uh, we, we, what, we'll be gone. What day of the month? £100 starting from, what, 1st of May? Is that going to be all right? 1st of May, all right? Yes. Yeah. 1st yeah. of May will be fine. Just phone if you've got any doubts or if you, even if you just want advice. I don't want the, I don't want you to get into this bother again or someone else comes. I'd rather just deal with it in its entirety and then it's done. With the payment plan agreed, the case is resolved for now. All right, sorry for the no, inconvenience, right? No, thanks. Cheers. Okay, okay. Uh, not such a bad job, eh? I sort of feel sorry for 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 her because it can't be nice not to not to have somewhere of your own. But at least her family are there. They stick by her. It's good. It's good to see. In the last 15 years. The number of new businesses in the UK has increased by 50%, with sole traders being at the forefront of this surge in growth. However, more than one in three small business owners take home less than £100 in income each month. High Court enforcement agents Gareth Short and Craig Vernal work across Wales and the southwest of England. Okay, so we're off to Worcestershire next, right? Yeah. Down to uh, a company called Egg Media UK Limited. The company sells dresses online under the name of Want That Dress. It owes a large debt to a parcel delivery company. It's £45,673. The agents have already visited the company's business address without success. Notice of enforcement has been sent to the home of its director, Sonny Poole, and now the agents are on their way to recover the debt. Have we got some of the company assets? Let's have a look at Somebody's in. There's movement inside the house, but no one's answering. Gareth and Craig turn detective. Boxes here, mate. To want that dress. The date on this as well as the 11th of April, so it's traded recently. Yeah. With company parcels being delivered to the director's home address, the agents are suspicious that he may be trading from here. Hello, enforcement agents, you can open the door, please. Then talk, yeah. Oh, yeah. High court enforcement, OK. High court enforcement agents, we have. Looking for the owner or the director of Egg Media Limited, trading as want that dress. He's on his way around now, is he? We'll happily wait, no problem. Moments later, Sonny Poole, the director of Want That Dress, arrives at the house. Okay, Sonny, is there? Where's your brick, mate? Okay, be with me, make up a sec. Let me open my folder and we'll deal with it. There you go, mate. There's a copy of the writ there. Have a look. Yep, you can look it in my hands, yeah? Cool. <coughs> Egg Media UK Limited, mate. Yes, that's right. It's not me, is it? I'm not saying it's you, but you're the director of Egg Media UK I used to Limited. work there, yeah. I'm not the yeah. shareholder, I just work okay. there. So why are you at my house? You're a director. You're a director of the company, mate. We have done checks. Yeah, I am a director of the company. There you go, then. So you're not a shareholder, yeah? 
you are a director of the company. Yes, I am. So Perfect. Because you owe 45,000, the company owes 45,673 pounds. So position you're in now, unless, the, unless this debt is paid, we're going to be doing a thorough search of this property, looking for assets that are owned by Egg Media Limited. OK. OK. And then once we do find uh, those, those items, they will be removed and sold at public auction. Egg Media has never operated from this address. <coughs> it never will operate from this address. I'm okay. the director. I don't own it. OK. So you okay. need to leave now, please. We won't yeah. be leaving, mate. i, I got a reason to believe that Egg Media have got interest in, in items within this property. Uh, on what grounds? Frank, you are, they're trading from this address, yeah. but we're not. Are you refusing to pay this, mate? Is what? Are you refusing to pay it? Yes. As Sonny refuses to pay, the agents have the right to seize goods belonging to want that dress to offset the debt. As the expensive white BMW parked in the drive could be owned by the business, Craig decides to clamp it. Next, the agents look inside the house for other business assets they could seize. Gareth finds stock labelled Egg Media in a bedroom. Sonny, I've got another question for you, mate. If Egg Media got no interest in this property at all, yeah. why is this stock here from Egg Media? That's not stock from Egg Media. That's just a box that was used to send some. It's more proof again, mate. I honestly think he's lying to us, yeah? With evidence mounting that Egg Media are trading from Sonny's home address, Gareth puts the pressure on. Three weeks ago, I made a visit. You've had a chance to sell some stuff or sell some stock. You've buried your head on him. Of course I've buried my head on mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. I didn't really get the story. What happened? What happened? I used to send all that stuff out. Right. And I probably lost about 90 to 100 grand's worth of stuff, not in their system. Right. Which means we had to then use our own money to send all that stuff back out. So we were fucked. And then they sent us a bill for doing it. Just then, Sonny's aunt and uncle arrive. We'll be here now to either collect. £45,673, or we are going to start the removal process. Okay. So, so I'm not promising miracles, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but then, despite Sonny's insistence that none of the possessions in his home are linked to the business, he grabs a laptop and gives it to his auntie. If you take that, if you take that as a criminal offence, all right? No, it's mine. OK, yeah. you need, you need you to show us what it is. Show me you've seized it. Right? Yeah, it's upstairs. It's not. It's not right. Wait. Yeah. Take the laptop, all right? So. I've, I've already listed that. If you take that... <laughs> you... OK. I don't really want to be arrested for court. Sonny, with the greatest respect, mate, right? So, Sonny, if that wasn't on my egg media, why are you, ask, why are you asking her to take it? It's okay. a laptop. OK. OK. Yeah. If you could prove to us it wasn't on my egg media, yeah. well, you're, a left, not you're not a left or a no. With Sonny still not cooperating, Gareth and Craig continue to look for proof that his company is trading from his home address. Wow. They find Egg Media's bank statements. Sonny, yeah. question for you. So the 21st of March, had £13,000 in the bank of Egg Media Limited. Where's that gone, mate? Um, just spent on direct debits and shit. Again? If Egg Media have nothing to do with this property whatsoever, yeah. why is the bank statement here? Despite his denials, the agents are confident that Sonny's company is trading from his home address. But then Sonny's uncle shows them evidence that his car is on finance and can't be seized. Sorry. Uh, that be there? Yep. Cool. It's great. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 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 With the car out of bounds, the agents have to think on their feet. Sonny, yeah? if we give you 30 days to pay this off, are you able to give a down payment today? You need to play ball with us to be able to do that, yeah? Gareth calls the office to see what payment they'll accept today. It's a massive debt, you know, it's 45 grand. If you can get a couple of grand by Friday, yeah. it shows his commitment, shows he's serious about it. Yeah. Um, OK, cool. Gareth puts the deal to Sonny. A £2,000 down payment by Friday, three instalments of £500 and the remaining balance in 30 days. So what they're saying is if they're still looking for a down payment from you, yeah? With a down payment, look, they're, they're thinking, oh, yeah, he's taking a serious, he will pay at the end of the month. OK. 
I'll probably raise like two grand by the end of the week. Sonny agrees to the deal, but if he defaults, the agents will be back. Thank you, buddy. Hopefully, you won't see each other again, eh, mate? Okay, mate. All right. Okay. Job done. Cheers, mate. Thanks, all. Cheers, ta-da. The case is over for now. This debt isn't. It's not. It's not relevant to to what I'm doing. It's it's a small fish. It's another hurdle, and I've been overcoming them since I left school, and I'll overcome them again. This isn't the first, and it certainly won't be the last. Sonny might appear to be out of the woods, but then two weeks later, the agents are forced to return, and this time, the case takes a very unexpected twist. Again, again. Don't touch it, mate, don't touch it. High Court enforcement agents Gareth Short and Craig Vernal were in Worcester to collect a debt of over £45,000 owed by Egg Media Limited, trading as Want That Dress. The company owes £45,673. Company director Sonny Poole said he couldn't pay the debt. Are you refusing to pay it? Yes. And claimed he wasn't trading from home. Egg Media has never operated from this address, <coughs> it never will operate from this address. But the agents found evidence that suggested otherwise. Why is this stock here from Ag Media? Sonny then agreed to pay an initial £2,000 and the agent set up a payment plan for the rest of the debt. But Sonny has defaulted and now, two weeks later, Gareth and Craig are back. Sonny, you can open the door to speak to us, mate. Do you want to deal with us? He's dressed in a dressing gown and be just refusing to deal with us. With Sonny refusing to talk, Gareth and Craig decide to look around the property for goods they can seize to offset the £45,000 debt. So we've found paperwork in here that's got one that dress on it. So I'm guessing all the clothing here is owned by the debtor company. So if needs be, we can lift this. Inside the garage, the agents find trading receipts for the business. Sonny is clearly still trading from the address. He's selling a lot of dresses, mate. Let's do a quick calculation here, right? One, two, three, four. 400 quid's worth just there. The most annoying side of this job is finding a debtor who you know can pay it, just refuses to pay it. You've got to try and find something else that will push the debtor's button to make them engage with you. The company is 100% still trading. Of course it is, isn't it? Gareth and Craig's patience has run out. They now start removing the dresses and boxes of stock from his garage. Right, I'm gonna need some help. Thousands and thousands of dresses cram-packed into boxes. Mm. Cheers, mate. Thanks, pal. The agents know the contents won't clear the £45,000 debt, but hope this shock tactic may be the motivator that makes Sonny pay. Oh, my God. But then, at the back of the garage, Gareth makes a shocking discovery. Gun. Police, please. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't touch it, mate. Don't touch it. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi there. I'm a High Court enforcement agent. The reason for my call, just located four, what looked to be four guns. This, you know, I wish, certainly wouldn't have thought he should be in possession of this. OK, thank you very much. I've never seen anything like this before. Moments later, the police arrive. That's a BB gun, that one. BB guns are legal airsoft weapons. Is it really? Yeah, so, yeah. So it's a bit heavy, really. That's the last one. They make them out of metal quite a lot, so they look real. Yeah, that's what we thought we were. That's ridiculous, really, isn't it? That is also a BB gun. But it looks real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would he want all these guns? Some people just like them. Cool. Is BB gun. All safe. All, all airsoft weapons. Probably, little plastic balls. She probably wasted the time, really. Yeah. 
No, you haven't wasted our time. You did the wrong thing, Corvus. Wait, the thing is, they could have been real. Satisfied the guns are harmless, the police leave. The agents carry on removing goods. But then Gareth receives a call from the office, who've been relaying events to the claimant. TCBL. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, you okay, John? What do you want, what do you want us to do, mate? Right? Just pull off, is it? Yeah. I believe so. There's no way else we can deal with it. Cheers, John. Cheers, mate. It's bad news. The claimant doesn't want the assets as part payment for the debt and won't give the agents permission to seize them. Craig, are we going to pull off? Because the client won't give up. Well, if that's the case, then it's game over. But... The agents have no choice but to return the stock to Sonny's garage. So I'm leaving here today now feeling exactly the same as I did last time, which is uh, very frustrated. Um, our hands are tied, to be honest with you. There's nothing we can really do. It will be up to the client now to decide whether to take further action. Sixty per cent of small and medium-sized businesses in the UK are experiencing increased operating costs and believe it's having a negative impact on their cash flow. 70% of company owners have used loans to prop up their businesses, and for many, it's come at a huge personal cost. Father and son team Dell and Dale Anglin are back on the road again this time in East London, with a writ to collect a large debt from an Indian restaurant. Looking for a higher Iridium Limited. Total sum we look for is £22,125.95. The debt arose after the company that runs the restaurant, High Iridium Service Limited, were evicted from their previous premises. The owner of the restaurant, Mr Hygiene Paneer, took his landlord to court, claiming the eviction was unfair. Mr. Paneer lost his case, and now he has to pay legal fees and court costs. Those are corn nuts, see it there? Yeah. Uh, apparently, that's it. If Mr. Paneer can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize goods from the business to offset the £22,000 debt. Hello, mate. Is the owner or director here? No, he's over here. Uh, can we get him on the phone? Hello. Hello. I've got a high court writ for High Iridium Limited. I can take one and file a fight and then okay with you. Cheers, mate. Minutes later, Mr. Paneer arrives. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, good, thank you. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, Jean. How, How are you doing, sir? Are you okay? Yeah, good, thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. It's for money's owed. It's uh, £22,125 now. What that... needs to be done if I do We need to pay £22,125.95. OK, but I do not have any money in my bank. The issue is, Arjun, that we, we need to collect this money. With Mr Paneer saying he can't pay, the agents may have to seize the fixtures and fittings in the restaurant to pay off the debt. But Mr. Paneer thinks he has proof that the assets here don't belong to him and can't be seized. His friend Martin steps in to listen. Premium will be paid in five monthly instalments starting 1st December 2015. The five monthly instalment is the goods which has been purchased for this place. Mr. Paneer shows the agents his lease. He claims he's making monthly payments to his current landlord to purchase the fixtures and fittings in the restaurant from him. He claims that he doesn't own them outright, but Dale is suspicious. At the end of the day, if I'm buying something of someone, I'd want a receipt or an invoice or something, yeah, with the terms on it and a list of what I'm buying. Surely you would have that. Because I'm a bit stressed out. I couldn't find where exactly it says that. The lease shows that Mr. Paneer has been making payments to his landlord but there's no mention of the purchase of fixtures and fittings in the document. 
the payments appear to be solely for the rent. With no proof to the contrary, Dell and Dale believe that the assets belong to the company named on the writ and could be seized. They ramp up the pressure. What you should be doing is putting your time, stressed or not, to finding out how we're going to get this money. If we start removing goods, we're going to be at the balance of 24,420. The bill will go up if we have to start removing goods. I can pay you 100 pounds. That's what I can do right now through the bank. I find it quite insulting that you just offered us 100 pounds for a 22,000 pound debt. No, it's not. When you've got two businesses running. OK, give me like 10 minutes or so. Let me discuss with him. Let me see who we can help. Well, take your 10 minutes, put it to good use. OK. Because in 10 minutes' time, I will start making calls myself. The clock is ticking. If Mr. Paneer doesn't come up with an acceptable offer, the agents will be forced to remove assets from the restaurant, putting his business at serious risk. He's under pressure, though. If we took a course of action that involved removal, he is going to be out of business. There isn't another way of putting it. He's just got to find some money. The debt's too large. He's just got to, he's got to dig deep. Ten minutes later, Mr. Paneer has a new offer. Just call a few people, and the uh, best I could get up at the moment is around £1,000, £1,500. £1,500. £1,500. That's the maximum we get now, right now. OK. That's not going to be enough. Where are we at? Do you want to go to your office? Do you want to take a minute? Go on. Dell and Dale give Mr. Paneer time to think about his situation. In the event that he cannot raise enough funds to make an arrangement or to clear the debt, he will lose his business. We will remove. He's been left in no doubt about that. Dale calls for backup to help him and Dell remove the heavy kitchen equipment if Mr. Paneer doesn't raise his offer. And we'll have no choice. We'll have to take stuff today. When the agents return, Mr. Paneer shows Dell a new document on his phone. It's a list of fixtures and fittings sent from his solicitor, which he claims he's buying in instalments from his landlord. Walk-in cold room, walk-in freezer, two standing freezer, one standing fridge, one prep counter, two sinks, one tandoor. This is a prep counter, yeah? All this, all this combined is prep down area because they prepare here for... for the fact that's area. not that, that's not that. It's a refrigerated prep counter, it says. That is one so that's not that. That's not in it. That's not in it. The list doesn't seem to correspond to the items in the kitchen, nor does it prove that they don't belong to Mr Paneer's company, High Iridium Service Limited. Dell's patience has run out. You tell lies, OK? So I'll tell you what, right? Unless you come with a significant amount of money... I mean, what do you want me to do? I want you to pay. I pay the bill. Uh, no, but what do, you, what do you expect me to do? I won't, I don't have any sources to do that. You've been please. taking the mickey out of us. Mr Paneer has run out of excuses. The agent's only option now is to remove the assets from the restaurant. Dale's backup arrives. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Graham Aldred. More paper is so It's just a list. No, 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 Fourteen no, 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 tables. No, 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 one for each, one for each. The team begin to remove goods from the restaurant. Yeah, it needs to turn off. It needs to turn off. Everything turned off. A lorry arrives to remove the goods. But Mr. Paneer seems to have disappeared. But just as the lorry is being loaded, a member of staff approaches the agents. Yeah, that's fine. It seems that Mr. Paneer is willing to make another offer to save his business. As an enforcement agent, when you start removing goods, um, action begets reaction. Things start to happen. You generate activity. People start running around a little bit harder, and making more phone calls to try and get the money. Half an hour later, Mr. Paneer returns. I do. Do. How much money do you have there? How much money did you manage to get to? Yeah, is he hitting it? £3,500. £3,500. You can't get any more. That's right. I told you. 
Mr. Paneer has raised just £3,500. But it's still not enough to stop the enforcement action. Dell gives Mr. Paneer an ultimatum. Pay £6,000 or lose his business. The van is here. The auctioneers and so forth and so forth and so forth. You just need to get to six. That's my last call. In fact, you've already, you know, given me. I do not, I cannot make any calls. You have to get to six. I don't need to see anything. I just need you to get... Just then, Mr Paneer receives a call. OK. Altogether, I can get 5,000. That's the maximum I can get. He has £3,500 in cash and offers to pay £1,500 on a debit card. Yeah, well, the agents accept the offer. Brian will finish that off. Let's just get this stuff off. Mr Paneer agrees to pay the rest of the balance on a payment plan. Now they've secured payment, everything has to come off the lorry. Yeah. You'll be getting Let's the form, so don't worry, we'll be giving it to you. Dell and Dale have got a result in a difficult situation. But in Gareth and Craig's next case... Then pay, come in frightening old people. ..they meet two pensioners whose debt has pushed them to breaking point. Just mm -hmm. take what you want and feck off, all right? Last year, research revealed that 30% of UK retirees found themselves in debt, owing an average amount of nearly £35,000. One in ten had debts totalling over £100,000. High Court enforcement agents Gareth Short and Craig Vernal are in Oxfordshire, to collect nearly £4,000 owed to a firm of solicitors. Where are we off to there, mate? Um, Into Oxford. Uh, I'm going to see um, a Annie Langley. It's quite a big sum of money owed to a, a law firm, solicitor company. Uh, we are looking to collect just short of £3,900. The debtor, Annie Langley, was taken to court by the company after she failed to pay their fees for a compensation case following a car accident. The solicitors escalated the case to the High Court and Mrs Langley must pay in full today. Voices inside. Hey there. Hello. Look for Annie Langley, please. That's me. That's you, yes? Yes. High Court Enforcement. Who? High Court Enforcement. OK, thank you. So what are you, what are you after? It's to do with a High Court warrant that's been his issued. It's High Court writ. It. You can go and take the grand injunction. Okay, OK, Mrs Langley, should we explain where we're coming from? You can pee off them because I'm okay. not saying okay. nothing. The solicitors have gone to the county court and have obtained a county court judgment against you. They've now escalated it up to the High Court, and the High Court have issued them with a writ. The balance at the moment stands at £3,847. He's 84, I'm nearly 70. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. has done sweet efforts OK, Miss, we, we appreciate the predicament you're in at the moment, and you're saying <laughs> they've done nothing for they've you. They've done nothing okay. at all. They've sent me a few lazy letters. But unfortunately, so. they've gone to court, which means you've got a writ. Despite her dispute with the solicitors, Mrs Langley must pay today, or her possessions are at risk. But we don't want it to come to that. Well, we ain't got the money, so you've got no other choice no, unless you want to arrest me. No, no, all we get is our lazy pension every week. <clears throat> and we have to pay rent, council tax, water rates, gas, light. Mrs. Langan, do you appreciate the severity of this at the moment? I do. You, you just seem to. Okay, I appreciate. Let me at the yeah. garden park saying I was entitled to this, I was mm -hmm. entitled to that. Okay. And at the end of the day, now they're looking for three grand off of me. I appreciate you may not agree with it, but unfortunately, the judges agree that you owe this money and needs to be paid. And the last thing we want to do is start to remove your goods. 
Just take what you want and feck off, all right? Language now. Well, then piss take. Come in frightening old people. I don't take it personal if an elderly person's walked rude to me, but it's something you just need to take. It's part of the job. Just just let them let them vent the anger and then deal with them afterwards. But unfortunately, there needs to be a conclusion to this today, look. Like. Well, I've got no solution, have you? We haven't got any money to pay. No. And we're not going to come into any money overnight, are we? Nearly three grand for nothing. A few old lazy lepers and being led up the garden path and being gone. It's clear that Mrs Langley can't afford to pay the £3,800 debt in one go. The agent's only option is to try and negotiate a payment plan. We need to speak to the solicitors involved and, and see what they're willing to accept and we need to try and work between the both of you to come to a happy medium where that you can afford to repay it and they are happy with the payments that are being made. Mrs Langley's offer of £10 a month means it would take over 32 years to pay off the debt. I'll be completely honest with you, Mrs Langley, that wouldn't be accepted. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. But that, that would take 380 months to clear. Well, I'll be dead longer before that anyway, so they still won't get their money, whatever way you look at it. But we're probably looking to clear that debt over about six months, not 380. We can't, no. That's what I said, take what you want. Nothing's come to that value in here anyway. A lot of people think the elderly have got money, but nine times out of ten, the people that we deal with have got no money at all. They're living off their state pension. They can't afford to, to live a daily life, never mind pay off a debt. It's clear to the agents that the couple are living on the breadline and that paying off their nearly £4,000 debt is impossible. I think it's struggling. I don't feel comfortable taking. I've just worked out, clear that over six months. It's £600 a month. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No, that's just, that just ruin them. They'd lose a house and everything. They're not willing to do that. That's not a chance. Gareth tries to find out how the debt built up in the first place. I had an accident and they rang up and said that we were entitled to £7,000 or something. Right, OK. And was my son's little boy, yeah. he was in the car at the time, he was only two then. Well, never. And they was ringing, ringing him as if he was an animal. Ah, uh, right, OK. And we do. We've stopped dealing with it and that, because of that, that's built up. And built up and built up. We haven't done anything like that. No, no. Just being, being pressurised all the time to pay something. And we do. As the couple have no means to pay the debt, Craig calls the office. The offer that they've been able to put forward is initially £10 a month. Um, and I think there's... No a visible assets that we can levy against, Craig, no? There's, there's, there's nothing, nothing, no Absolutely assets at nothing. all significant to this debt. All right, Bob, yep. I know it's frustrating, but, you know, there's nothing you can do, is there? No, 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 it's, what, it's the best option, mate. It's the best option all around. All right, mate. Cheers, no, I appreciate that, Craig. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Buddy. Bye, bye. Bye. The office have advised Craig that they have no option but to drop the case. We've, um, I've spoken to our office. Um, given the, the circumstances, uh, I think there's a vulnerability issue here within the fact that you're both um, pensioners claiming a pension. Um, so we're going to be pulling off at the moment, all right, and withdrawing from, from the job. We are not going to, certainly not going to be removing anything from you, OK, given... No. Mrs. Lang, Mrs. Mrs Lang, my advice to you, though, is do get to the bottom of it. Otherwise, you will get somebody else just knocking your door in the future. And good luck with it, all right? Take care, Mr Langley. Thank you. Bye-bye. With one of the ones, I pulled up my heartstrings the most. I think we've done the right thing here, mate. Next time, Gareth and Craig get a hostile reception. I'm not acknowledging anything because I don't know. Fuck all. And dig deep for the truth at a farm. This is upsetting so much. Somebody's fibbing. 
while Phil and Steve meet a young family living in shocking conditions. Midland Bank, is that what you call a panic room? It's not a habitable place to live, especially with small children. Are back out on patrol next Wednesday at nine as the new series of Can't Pay Will Take It Away continues.